Welcome back. Let's now switch gear to the issue of politics. And this time in focus is the Labour Party. We're being joined in the program uh, from Abuja studio by the chief spokesperson of the Obidati organization, Mr. Yunus Atanko. Mr. Tanko, thank you so much for coming on the program. All right, uh, if you can hear me, Mr. Tanko, let, let's begin from what's been uh, happening online about this issue of uh, the back and forth over this issue of donations, spendings, and all of the intrigues that have been going on within the uh, obedient movement as well as the Labour Party about how money has been changing hands. Maybe you bring that a bit of clarification to those who are not quite familiar with what's going on, because we understand and we know that the presidential candidate at some point come out to say, this is how much we received, this is how much was spent, this is the balance. We've also had uh, ESCO of the party, the Labour Party, also talk about the issue of, uh, you know, allegations against uh, Julius Abure. So there's been a lot of issue around the finances of the Labour Party. Help us make sense of what is going on. Uh, we seem to have a difficulty with that yeah, audio. Apparently, yeah, not to worry. Uh, we'll get that through to you. But it's important to have this discussion, uh, no matter how uncomfortable it may be, particularly for members of a party or the obedient movement. Uh, yesterday, that uh, was not a pretty sight, uh, particularly on social media, with the accusations and counter accusations uh, making the round. So it's important to set the record straight mm -hmm. and ask the people in the know and uh, you know put these issues out there. Uh, for clarification, uh, you know, further questioning, and the rest. Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, finances uh, is an important part of the electionary process. It's not a popular thing in Nigeria, though, uh, for po political parties to uh, publicly give accounts of how much money came in, how much money was spent, and all of that. It's a big deal in the U.S. In fact, it, it could be a big infraction and affect your ambition generally. Uh, no matter how rich you are, whether you're Donald Trump or anyone, um, tracking your finances is quite important because they expect that people donate their monies to you to pursue your ambition. So this is why this conversation is quite important and we've seen all of this revelation. But it's worrying to see that there's a lot about uh, the finances of the Labour Party uh, and all of this. The, the presidential candidate has come out to say, this is how much money came in and how much money uh, I personally donated. That's talking about him and how much money came from abroad and locally and all of that. And there has been this counter accusation, or oh, this person um, used the money for that. I, 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 I've had conversation, I think I interviewed, uh, is it the national treasurer now? and the National Publicity Secretary one time. It was a big argument as to how the money is moved and who is signing what. And then we saw what happened with the Labour Party uh, National Chairman, all of that issue. So it's important we have this conversation to know exactly what is going on with the finances of one of the lead opposition parties in the country. Uh, since they've come out to say, this is the money that went through our political party, that's commendable. But now uh, it has to be scrutinized to make sure that uh, the right things were done, which is perhaps why the leadership of the party from the presidential level had to come out to say this is what came in, this is what was spent. Bukola. Well, sometimes uh, when accusations are flying around, it's important and instructive to ask who is making those accusations, what their interests are and what their objectives are. Some of the accusations that are flying around are certainly unwholesome about how uh, some members of the party are purchasing uh, properties, you know, and have all of a sudden become wealthy, you know, following uh, the uh, p participation and good showing, by the way, of uh, the Labour Party in the last presidential election. But what's the end, what's the real objective at the end of the day? And this is certainly not the time for the Labour Party to uh, be silent on these uh, allegations. It is the time for them to come out and provide clarification, you know, such that um, the, the Labour Party can retain the strength that it has come up with, particularly uh, following uh, the uh, 
good showing that it made during the 2023 presidential election, having come out from a place where it was deemed uh, the, the beautiful bride, you know, of uh, the, the ambition of failed politicians to becoming a presidential, a, a political party to reckon with. So it's very, very important to have this uh, conversation. It's important for the Labour Party to speak at this point in time. Guys. Well, one of the top trends right now is um, Aburi. And that's uh, Julius Aburi trending uh, at this point. Just goes to show how important this is. Of course, Peter Abi is also a top trend, and that's why we're following up with this. And I think during this whole back and forth, uh, the term or the expression, we know they give shishi, uh, yet mm -hmm. again came up, and mm -hmm. you see a lot of people taking on uh, different angles to this one. We'll reconnect uh, with my, Mr. Yunus Tanko in our Abuja studio. <coughs> I know he's agent uh, to speak on these issues. By the way, we had also reached out to some of the people who are accusing or being mm -hmm. accused uh, on this one to get their opinions aired. But as of now, uh, that hasn't happened. So we'll have that conversation <coughs> on the Labour Party. Add yeah. to that, what alternative ideas uh, the party has or may have uh, about the situation, uh, the economy particularly in the country? We've seen Mr. Peter be speaking about that, <coughs> uh, about particularly the donation from Ukraine and other things. So what are the ideas that we can all consider to help our country. Those are the issues we'll be taking a look at. Yeah, God, it, uh, you said something, and we must build on that, which is when you are accused, uh, as long as the issue is not subjudice, it's not in court, it's important you come and defend yourself. It is quite important. So when invitations are handed out to you, nobody's trying to indict you already because the law is very clear. You're not guilty until proven by a competent court, of ju a competent court in the land. So it's quite important. And when I look at the numbers, <clears throat> over 500 million donated from citizens in... Um, in four banks, uh, Peter Obi himself donated, um, that's from his own account, about 800 million. We had uh, the spendings has to do with campaign materials, media and radio broadcasting, election promotion materials, polling unit agents, uh, bank charges, administrative charges, legal expenses, campaign and election activities, and they had a balance of 19 million. But we've also had uh, accusations against uh, Julius Abure in terms of some of the acquisitions he's had in terms mm -hmm. of property, in terms of money and all of that, which are all allegations which we expect that uh, all of this should be cleared by Yunus Tanko as this counter accusation now is within the party mm. trying to say, look, mm, we need to be clear on how our money was spent on this particular campaign so that going forward this toga of, you know, um, we, we will make sure that we account for every money is truly is, is really accounted for. But we'll take this quick break now. When we come back, we'll squeeze gears. Join us again. Welcome back. When our switch gets back to our Abuja studios, we needed to ensure that uh, Mr. Eunice Tanko, the chief spokesperson of Obidati organization, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Tanko, thank you so much for your understanding and patience. Uh, maybe you can pick up from the question I asked. Uh, let's start from there. Can you hear me? Please do volume. Mr. Tanko, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can Good hear morning. you. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I, I was saying earlier on, thank you for, for having me. Before I delve into the issue of the finances of the Labour Party, the gentleman in your studio was uh, speaking about food security. Uh, permit me to just lean on the uh, position of our principal, Peter Gregory Obi, His Excellency, who said that um, Nigeria has no business with poverty, especially Hungary anyway, uh, considering the fact that uh, the northern part of this country control 744,286 square kilometers landmarks, which compared to Ukraine would have 603,000 square kilometers. And yet, shamefully uh, to us, unfortunately, Ukraine is donating um, grains to us as a people. When you go further, you look at the comparison within Netherlands and uh, Niger State. Niger State on its own can feed Nigeria and feed Africa as it were. Niger State has 76,000 76, plus um, arable land, and then uh, Netherlands has just 33,000. And yet, Netherlands was able to produce and export uh, agricultural product worth about $125 uh, $25 billion. 
And uh, if Niger State can just manage to do like 5% of what Netherlands has done, we could have been raking home of 6 billion naira. Furthermore, when you look at the combination of um, 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 Taraba State and um, uh, Borno State combined together, where we have serious issue of insecurity, you have combined square uh, landmass of 125,000 square meters. And then compared to Belgium, which has just 30,000 square miles and have been able to do a lot of work and dam of agriculture with 30, uh, 20, uh, breaking in $20 billion, we as a people, considering um, Borno State and Taraba State, Borno State and Taraba State, which is four times of, of this particular Belgium, we could have been able to take care of the insecurity situation. So the, the whole issue here is about engaging our youth in productive activities. Of course, when you engage the youth in the, in the local government, in the world level and everywhere, they can be able to sustain themselves and make a lot of gain and defend the interests of themselves and their integrity and the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. These are some of the statistics in which was read out by His Excellency Peter Obi at yesterday's as when he was out, bestowed upon the honor of being the politician of the year. Please, it is good that sometimes we look at some of this particular fact and concentrate as a people to work together and take this country out of the wood. It seems to me this particular government is actually not prepared for governance as it's where. But if they need any consultative uh, support and in terms of words and all, they should take the word of the oppositions and use it as a way. It's a free consultancy. It can help them in developing and taking Nigeria out of the wood. Now, taking that, taking that out of the uh, context, let me delve into the question about the, regard to, about, uh, about the issue of the finances of the Labour Party. His Excellency Peter Gregory Obi is a man of integrity. In every aspect of his life, he has never been found wanting as regard to issue of misappropriation. And anywhere he goes to, he tries to maintain high integrity standard. And that is why at a point in time, he was a member and head of chairman of board of directors of so many banks. And yet, he was able to excel without a dotted line being ac accusing him of mis misappropriation. And that is the reason why when he looked at the issues being raised within the Labour Party, he asked for independent auditing to, be, to audit the Labour Party account so that those who are accusing can be able to go to sleep if their facts are correct, and those who are accused can be able to stand clean and say, look, what we are being accused of is actually not true. Now, the Labour Party on its own can also had also been able to do, under the leadership of Barista Julius Aburi, had done an internal auditing. The internal auditing has been presented to the National Working Committee members, and they've been able to scrutinize it and give credence whether this particular account are according to what is specified by law and within the threshold of any political party. Don't also forget that the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC, does an independent auditing of every political party. Remember, I have been a chairman, so I know. So this auditing will come from the Independent Electoral Commission. They will inspect all your books, all your accounting books, and make sure that they are within the ambience of law as being prescribed. So that way, whether you accuse somebody or you do not accuse anybody, INEC still have the prerequisites by law to uh, publish. And that particular in, uh, auditing will be published by, the, uh, by INEC for every uh, every Nigerian to see. Now, so you see, there are two, doc uh, two auditing that will be conducted. I, I, as far as I am concerned, I am so glad that some of these things are coming out because th these are not new things. But th the new, new thing here is that the Labour Party has been able to present itself for public scrutiny. Unlike Mr. other Tango. political parties who hide their own problems under the carpet. Well, that Mr. gives, us, as, that gives every me. Nigerian an access to look into our finances and say, right. hey, these guys, are you doing good or you're not doing good? So the, and the, if the, are the angle of this conversation, uh, Mr. Tanko, if you can hear me, so I, I'm sure you've been following what's uh, going on on social media. So there is the conversation around uh, the campaign, Mr. Peter Albi and the, the finance for the campaign. But this conversation also has an angle to it. And that is the fact that of late, we've heard accusations targeted at members of the either the Obidati organization, either the campaign or 
disobedient movement. Some of them being accused of collecting monies to organize, at that time, Twitter spaces. Some of them being accused of pocketing funds. And it's been said that it, go, it goes against the, we know they collect shishi mantra, which was made popular by the obedient movement. So are you aware of these accusations as, as a major member of this movement? And what is being done to ensure that whoever is found culpable, or whoever is fingered in all of this uh, is shown as, or at least is, uh, you, you ensure that you stand by that mantra of we know the give shishi and adequately either punish or whatever action is uh, deemed fit by the organization. Okay, Coyote, the truth about this is that immediately all of this accusation and counter accusation came up. Uh, a lot of issues packed up. It is true that some other organizations, there are support groups, different, different support groups, who decided to support the aspiration of His Excellency Peter Obi. And I remember with nostalgia, when His Excellency was giving his account of what he donated and what anybody donated to him in that account was made public. And I, I, you saw my humble self with uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Member uh, Comrade Aisha Yusuf, who was reading out the statements of the account, bit by bit, and it was published. Now, His Excellency said that if there are any other donations that were made to any other organizations or groups, probably the public can make us to know this particular organization and they should tell us where XYZ is being kept or can they account for the monies that was being donated by this organization. So a lot of organizations need to do proper accounting to those who donated any money to them to support this particular aspiration. Obviously, that particular donation had nothing to do with the Labour Party, had nothing to do with His Excellency, his own campaign financing. They are independent donations to different, different groups. I give you an example. There are groups who feel that they need to reach out to persons in, in the northern part of the country. And so those who are on ground and those who are donating will give this donation and then this particular persons or group will go out to perform these particular duties. There are, there are a particular group, uh, Doctors for Peter Obi, for example, articulate and well-transparent set of people who went around the Federation trying to shower in support for uh, uh, His Excellency Peter Gregory B by conducting free medical services in and out of every part of this country. They donate money to their groups within their own sector. And those particular groups are the ones that will account for the whatever it is that was given to them by the donors. The donors cut across the whole world, individuals who have families at home, say, look, we need to support this particular cause. If X amount of money is being given to this particular group, please account for that particular. It only show credibility so that nobody will think that probably they are donating to ghosts or somebody will use that X amount of money for his own personal benefit. That is exactly what I think is going on in the social media. So each group is asking, asking those that they donate X amount of money for to account for that particular money. That has nothing to do with the Labour Party or His Excellency. But of course, His Excellency, as the father of all, has asked that everybody that collected any X amount of money should please account for it for those who have donated so that to have clearance and acceptability in the process. Well, it's exemplary, Mr. Tanko, that um, the Labour Party is giving an account of its stewardship uh, as far as the prosecution of the 2023 presidential election is concerned. But, you know, one can't um, ignore the fact that um, the Labour Party is still divided with uh, some still claiming um, leadership positions and, you know, that leaves those of us in the media with the dilemma as to how to couch their designations, uh, factional spokesperson, factional chairman. This is from the breakdown, donations from citizens, 575 million. Now, because of this, some are saying that some of these donations were made to the national leadership of the party to field candidates, positions where there had been 
aspirants, genuine aspirants before, and then they were jettisoned for candidates that were paid for. And this is really what is causing division in the party. I'd like you to speak to this allegation. I, I, as I said earlier on, the Labour Party is accountable for any money that is being given to it in its own account, which the chairman gracefully has also done. Uh, we must give credit to those who have been able to account for X, Y, Z, money given to them to perform. There is no truth as regard to issue of issue of leadership. Let me clear this. The issue of leadership, there has never been any case as regard to issue of leadership in the Labour Party. And here, I think the, 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 the media has to help us. If you sit down in your house right now, when you Google to find out who is the chairman of the Labour Party, who is the national secretary of the Labour Party, who is the organizing secretary of the Labour Party, you will see it on your website. It is very clear. It is Barrister Julius Aburi. Not minding any of the accusation or counter accusation. And the secretary of the party is Malam Ibrahim Farouk Umar. There's no ambiguity. Now, the issue of court cases is a, a different. The issue of court cases based, is basically on the issue of forgery. It's not about leadership. And then there's an injunction, quoted and unquoted, that uh, the, the chairman should uh, maybe vacate the seat while an investigation will be conducted. Now, the truth about it is that the party has an internal mechanism. And if you accuse the party leadership, we can only bring it up within the party and the party will form up an independent, I mean, internal investigation. What the chairman has also gracefully done and even had the reconciliation committee put in place. Now, also, the issue of whether there was a, a, um, a court injunction against the chairman, that may be put to rest in a few days probably because the issue was also taken to an appeal court to look at the statutory of that particular um, uh, uh, injunction that was given. That is the only issue. So the press should help us clearly to establish that there is no any issue of leadership in the Labour Party. And if there were any issues whatsoever as regard to the leadership, the National Working Committee will sit down and say, look, this we will do and announce to the whole world. It's the transparency process. And I think kudos should be given to us as a collective uh, entity who are trying to do the right thing. Look, there's no gain saying that we are aware that are those who want to see the Labour Party coming down. But to us, this will only make us uh, stronger as a group. Uh, we, are, we are team players. When there are issues within us, we'll deal with it. Nobody, no single individual is above the law within the Labour Party. Nobody. If you are found wanting, the party will deal with you according to the provision of the constitution of the party and then the provisions of the law. There's no doubt about it. Because this uh, gives credibility <clears throat> to who we are as a people and what we represent in the society. So we cannot say that there are no problems. Yes, there are problems, but we will deal with it within the provision. So many committees have been put in place. And I am glad that some people are not shying away from accusing uh, 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 each other if things are done wrongly. That is part of the credibility. And I challenge you right. to ask any political party who have been able to do this at the moment now. Most all of right. the political parties have kept all of their problems inside, and then some may even say that that is the best way to go. But I, I, I disagree, because it only right. does not give, it did not give the credibility and openness to the system. But we in the Labour Party, we are open to the public for criticism so that right, we can Mr. be able to move forward. All right, Mr. Tanko, we must thank you so much for coming. We wish we had more time uh, because it was supposed to be a two-part conversation, but we're glad you, you took the second part um, early, uh, perhaps uh, envisaging what would have happened. Uh, but uh, we must thank you for coming on the program. But the conversation keeps, we'll keep it coming and keep it going, uh, and we'll be glad that whenever we call on the Labour Party, uh, you'll be there to answer these questions. Mr. Yunus Atanko is the chief spokesperson of the Obidati organization. Thank you so much for coming uh, to bring your perspective on the program. Thank you very much, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Absolutely. So let's switch gears now. We'll take this quick break. When we come back, we'll talk to the guy who we're asking the question, is he the next godfather of the Nollywood industry, or is he going to play that villain role for a long time? Or a sweet guest? We'll find out after this break. Join us again.